All right. Let's see if we can get the pressure, pressure washer fixed. Got a part in today. Let's give it a shot. Okay guys, so the other day we were working on this. The rope kept pulling, you know, it wouldn't start it. Rope would yank out of your hand and we took the valve cover off. Looks like it's bent right here, down there on the bottom. I'm not positive, but it sure looks like it to find that. So my guess is that that's going to be an issue, the issue of why <clears throat> that thing wouldn't wouldn't start and it kept yanking the pull rope out of our hand. So we've got the genuine Honda part right here. Again, this is not mine, guys. It's for a friend of mine. He does a lot of things for me. He's always giving me something. So, after I finished the video, Monkey said, how much are them things? I said, they're not very much. She said, you know what, why don't you just go ahead and order him one and put that in there and see if that's a problem. So, I was like, you know, alright, I will. So, I looked it up and I got the part. You can see it's not used. Genuine Honda part, six dollars forty-three cents. That's what that cost me, and it was shipped here. It wasn't supposed to be here till the 29th, and then I got a notification saying that it was going to be here the 24th, which is Christmas Eve. Then I got a notification today saying it's out for delivery. So let's line these two things up here. Yeah, you can see that that is way off. So hopefully that is the problem. We got to put this over here on this side and we have to adjust it with this feeler gauge. Well, you know, I'll adjust both of them. If I can read this anymore, this, this was her dad's. It's an old one. Um, the intake and you can always tell the intake and exhaust the intake is always closest to the uh, to the carburetor and exhaust is always well close to the exhaust the muffler uh, the intake should be six thousandths and the exhaust I believe is eight thousandths so I've got to see if I can read these numbers Alright, so looks like seven. It looks like maybe eight there. I really need to get another set of these. Can't read them. That looks like nine, eight, nine, ten. Alright, so. stuck these back on there you know so it wouldn't get moisture I gotta straighten this up a little bit it did get a little bent trying to take it off and I gotta see if I got any um... yeah I'm down underneath here Let's see if I got any uh, gasket sealer gasket maker stuff that's what you use on these things we got to get it cleaned up real good so let me go ahead and get that taken care of. I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to get this cleaned off, straightened out. And we'll put this on, which is only That's the only thing that holds it on. That right there. That little pin. That's the only thing that holds it on. Um, I don't feel any I mean, you can see where it was riding, but I don't feel any divots, so this should be fine. 
and again there's our cracked one so you can you can tell the difference had a guy comment on that I know he didn't watch the whole video because he, he commented turn the fuel valve on and check valve valve lash well first of all turning your your fuel on has nothing to do with your valve lash here's where you check your valve lash here's where you adjust your valves right here so if I pulled this off apparently I have found a problem so I know he didn't watch the whole video so anyway I just commented you know <laughs> if you watched the whole video you probably wouldn't have posted that comment but uh, you know I don't understand why people won't watch the whole video and then you know then they can't take it back it's like well you know go back and watch the video you'll see I took this off there's there was no sense in checking the valve the valve lash because right right there's the problem you know I mean so why check it it's not going to be right I know that okay guys let me get this off of here and get it straightened out getting closer okay guys I pulled the exhaust the heat shield off I'm gonna clean that up a little bit for the, for Ryan it was funny because the other day I had that had this old part in that plastic bag the day I made the video and I had it sitting right up here he stopped by <laughs> it was funny we just monkey was having a sale yard sale so we just came out and uh, from ordering that part he showed up <laughs> and he asked he said what do you think about this thing I said I haven't had a chance to look at it yet and I looked down and there was that part laying right there in that plastic bag I was like oh man cuz I'm trying to surprise him you know and uh, <laughs> I was like oh no he didn't see it or if he did he didn't say anything so I'm gonna go ahead and run this on the buffer real quick clean it up some okay guys so had to go get some of this gasket making stuff. Just put it on. You let it dry until it gets tacky. I know a lot of people say, oh, you should use the black RTV, and, you know, that stuff's like $17. I ain't, like Terrell says, this, it's not the space shuttle. It's a small engine. This stuff will work. It doesn't have to hold anything tight. It just keeps it from leaking, that's all.
so I'll let it get tacky and I'll put it on then I'll start the bolts and I'll let it set for a couple more minutes and then uh, then we'll tighten her up so before I do too much cleaning on this thing I want to make sure that's going to be the only issue it has and also that, that black stuff you got to wait 24 hours on it and I've never done that I waited till it got tacky, put it on, bolted up. By the time I got everything together, it was ready, and I've never had an issue with it. All right, let's let that get tacky. Then we'll put that on. I'll check the oil again because I know I lost a little oil. So we'll top the oil off. And then uh, if it runs good, we'll go ahead and clean the rest of it up with WD-40 or something like that. Okay, guys, so I didn't turn you on when I stuck that back on, but I was talking to you. <coughs> Wrong socket. Okay. I did I let this set up for about a half an hour 45 minutes I want to tighten them up a little bit they don't have to be super duper tight just keeping out oil it's a shame I can't get to those with my little gun here again not tight just snug them up I'm gonna set let it set up a little bit longer and then we'll take it over and see if it'll fire up and if it does then we'll finish I was doing some wiping wiping it down a little bit and uh, you know just kind of clean the some of the grime off of it and if it runs good, then we'll go ahead and wipe off the rest of it. Make it look halfway decent for him. Alright guys. Yeah, I see. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do. All right, let's let it set for a little bit longer and hopefully it'll fire up for us. We'll take it over, hook it up to the water and check it out. Okay guys, I'm going with one pool. All right, we'll give it a second for the fuel to get where it's gotta go. And if it runs, we'll clean it up. I'll give him a call. Let him come down and pick it up. Alright, let's try it. One pull. Well, <laughs> it started with one pull.
Man, that sounds good. All right. Now, I figured that was going to start with one pull because these Hondas normally do. There's no primer on them. You choke them. They start like, you know, it's like a car with an automatic choke, you know. Um, you just get in and start them. So I figured it would, but there's always that possibility. Uh, but I did, when it was up on the table, I did pull a couple times to make sure that it wasn't, you know, feeling like it was locking up. And that probably helped prime it, so, you know, but, so I figured, now, I do have a wand that'll fit on there, but my wand's only rated at 1,000 PSI, and this is uh, 3,000, I think. Yeah, this is 3,000, so it probably blow my hose up. But you can see it's working. So I'm going to shut the water down. Well, I'm going to let it run for a few minutes, then I'll shut the water down. I'll get you back up on the table, and let's clean it up for him, and I'll give him a call. Okay, guys. I showed this a while back on how you can clean up plastic uh, with transmission fluid. If you look at that real close, go like that. Look at that. See the difference? And wipe off the excess, and there you go. A lot of people think dirt would stick to it, which, yeah, you would think that. Let's, let's check this out down here. But actually, dirt kind of rolls off of it now what we used to use on our four-wheelers and stuff on the plastics of our four-wheelers we used to use uh, WD-40 but I'm getting kind of low on my WD-40 so I'm going to use transmission fluid and look at that and it'll stay that way uh, some of the stuff you put on there you know how like uh, Oh, I don't know what it's called. The stuff you use on your dash and stuff, those wipes, uh, it dries up. It will dry out after a while and it looks the same. So, let's get a before this. There's before and there's after, guys. So, yeah, it really cleans up nice when you do that. Yeah. Even clean that up a little bit. So there you go. Is he running? I'm gonna give him a call, have him come pick it up. And I'm gonna say, Shea Bear, the myth, the man, the legend. <laughs> I'm gone for now. And uh, weekend's coming up. So, well, you'll see this on the weekend. So have a great weekend and a Merry Christmas. Christmas Eve is Saturday. So I'll probably be doing a live stream. I don't know how long I'll go for, but I'll do a live stream of the lights like I did last year, play some music, we'll go from there. Alright guys, again, thanks for watching, appreciate it, and uh, stay tuned for more videos. <laughs> we'll see you in the next one guys, bye bye and take care.